All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to use elementary row operations uh, with matrices. And what they're used for is, for example, to get our matrix, like we talked about in the last video, um, to get some matrix into row echelon form or eventually into reduced row echelon form. So what we can do, there's three things we can do. Uh, the first one is that we can interchange two rows. And we denote that by saying, uh, by writing this. It's kind of the shorthand, shorthand method. We'd say row i switch with let's just say row j just another row now the second one we can multiply a row by a non-zero constant we uh, we talk about this or we write this like this k times r i just a shorthand way to say this and the last is add a multiple of a row to another row so we to write this we can write r i plus a multiple of some other row and say row j Okay, so those are the three elementary row operations. Now, I'll just um, to show you kind of what I mean by this, say we had a matrix that looks like, uh, let's see, I'll draw it up here. Uh, say we had a matrix that looks maybe something like 1, 1, 1, um, 7, and then the next row, let's say 2, negative 2, 1, and 3. Basically, according to the first rule, we can interchange these two rules, and this uh, this matrix or the system will be exactly the same. So we can say this is equal to um, 2, negative 2, 1, 3. And we'd put the top row down here, 1, 1, 1, 7. So we just interchanged row 1 with row 2. And the reason this is the same is because, well, if we imagine this as... Um, if we imagine this as a system of linear equations that it represents, we would, could say our system would be maybe, uh, let's say, x plus y plus z is equal to 7. And the next row, or the next equation in the system would be 2x minus 2y plus z plus z is equal to 3. Now, if we just put these in a different order, here we just switch the order like so. Now if we do the same down here, let's change color so you can see this. Um, well, first of all, let's put a bracket here. This is our system of linear equations, right? This is the same thing. So now we'll highlight this one in blue and we're gonna draw the blue one down here. And we have, well, 2x minus 2y um, plus z is going to be equal to 3 and the bottom will be x plus y plus z is equal to 7. So this is the same linear equation. Basically if we're picking, uh, if, we're, if, we find, if we solve x, y, and z for this, um, as long as we find a vector that fits, uh, solves both, both of these equations at the same time, that's the solution to this system of linear equations. And you can see easily that it's going to be the same solution whether we write it with this one on top or with this one on top. It's just two separate but related equations. So anyways, that's just a little example. Now I'll actually just go through and prove this using variables so you can see that all of these elementary row operations in fact do work in any circumstances. So let's draw, let's start off drawing uh, an example matrix. Let's say, let's say we just have A, B, and C, and D, E, and F. Okay, so this is a generic matrix uh, that represents the system of linear equations uh, that we can write like this. We would have ax plus by is equal to c. And on the bottom, we'd have dx plus ey is equal to f. So we'll start with the first, the first elementary row operation, interchanging two rows. And so if we interchange the two rows, we'll see it's very similar to here. We'll get, um, here, let's draw this here. We're going to apply this elementary row operation, row i switched with row j. And we will get dx, uh, dx plus ey is equal to f. And on the bottom now we get ax plus by equal to c. So now let's look at this. First over here we said ax plus by is equal to c 
and that still applies down here, ax plus by is equal to c. And same for dx plus ey is equal to f. When we've reversed the order of these, uh, when we've interchanged these two rows, sorry, dx plus ey is still equal to f. So that's perfect. This rule uh, works for any, anything you can imagine. So let's do the next one. Let's multiply our row by a non-zero constant. So we'll, uh, where should we write this? Let's do it right here. Let's say we want k times, let's say row i, row i. Now let's just pick a row, let's say ax plus by is equal to c. So put ax plus by is equal to c. And we want to multiply everything in this row by k. So we'll multiply both sides, k and k. Now let's look at this. So now if we just here we had ax plus by is equal to c. Now after the transformation or after the elementary row operation we have a k on both sides. We can cross that out. We can divide by k and we still get ax plus by is equal to c. So multiplying a row by a non-zero constant we can do that and it's no problem in any situation. Now the last one is adding a multiple of a row to another one. So let's start here. Let's write um, ri plus row i, sorry, row i plus k times row j. So let's start here. Let's say we have ax plus by is equal to c. So we have ax plus by is equal to c. And then we have k times dx Let's do, uh, let's add the, we'll add a multiple of the other row. So let's write it just below so you can see. Um, okay, so we have dx plus ey is equal to f. All right, and so we wanted to add a multiple of this row. So again, multiply both sides by k, like this, times k. And then we're going to add these two rows together. Just wrote it like this so you can kind of keep the, the like terms together. So basically what we're going to get is we will have ax plus by. Let's say we have ax plus by. Let's do it in brackets. ax plus by plus kx, no, sorry, plus kdx. Let's keep this in brackets again. Let's play dx plus key. Okay, EY is going to be equal to C plus KF, right? Plus KF. So now you can see what's happened here. We had the AX plus BY came from up here, plus the KDX plus KEY just came from distributing this K across. And then on the other side of the equation, we had C plus KF. Now we know. From up top, from looking at this equation here, let's just circle this. We know that ax plus by is equal to c. So we can we can swap this out. We have ax plus by. by. Let's cross that out and let's write a c here instead. And now what we have is a c on both sides, and we can subtract c from both sides, and they'll cancel out. So we can cross that out, and we can cross this out. And now we're left with kdx plus key plus kf. And this is the same thing. We can pull out the k again. Uh, we can have k plus uh, k sorry times dx plus ey is equal to kf. And if we divide both sides by k now, we're left with our original dx plus ey is equal to f. And so that's what we got when we added a multiple of one row to another. So you can see now that all three of these would work in any situation because we just did this with variables. So check out the next video and I'll actually work through um, a bigger example using real numbers.